Hi, my name is Jonathan Silva. Welcome to another episode of my Power Automate Basics series. For today's episode, what we're going to take a look at is how we can utilize JSON within Power Automate. Really, the big picture is understanding what is JSON if you are very new to Power Automate and why we need to be able to parse out JSON objects in order to use those in further actions throughout the flow. So let's jump into Power Automate and take a look. So what you see on screen here is all I've done was set up a flow with a manual trigger and just a compose data operation. Now inside of that compose data operation step here, I've added in a very small, very basic JSON array. Now the way that we work with our JSON is we are writing out a, this JavaScript object notation to be able to identify arrays, collections, items to be able to use throughout the process of moving our data. JSON is really useful here because it allows us to very you know, easily see the data and understand how we can utilize it within other actions within our flow in Power Automate. Now what I'd like to do here is to show you the different pieces of our JSON array by just going ahead and testing this to see how this actually shows up when the array is passed through. So we're going to do our manual test here. All right, so let's take a look at the output from that array. And here you see the input is located like this, and there is our output. Now, the way that this works as we work within our JSON is everything within our curly braces here would represent the actual uh, array that we are working with. And each and every single one of these are separate objects within that array. Think of these objects as columns on a table, right? Sometimes when we're working with specific actions in Power Automate, we are returning all the objects on a table, except we're not able to actually utilize them. Well, looking at the JSON here, you can see what those objects are, and these are going to be your header names of your columns. So we have name, company, and lucky number here. Now, along with the names of the column here and the way that this is described, it is a name value pair. So this section here, we have the name. The next bit we will have here within my first name, my company name, and there is my lucky number will be the value of that pair. Think of this as what is actually being returned as far as the maybe the cell within the column itself if you're pulling from a full table. And what we're gonna utilize in this case is the ability to extract the individual objects or the name value pairs to be able to utilize and place them inside of actions later on. Now in this case, we're just writing a very small array here to, to take each one of those pieces as dynamic content. But in some cases, we may need to use uh, parse JSON or be able to app, you know, capture each individual item when it's just not available as an output when we want to work with it. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. What I'm first going to do is copy this out because it's nice to have this on hand as we try to extract the individual values. Then I'm going to select edit here. And just for the sake of argument, I'm going to click new step. And if I send a new, have a new step to send an email, Let's say I want to send an email to myself with just the, the objects, just the, those fields there that I've just placed in. I can come here to the body of my email. And if I look at my dynamic content that does pop up, you'll see that I just have the entire output. I don't have the ability to call to each one of the specific objects like name, company, and lucky number to be able to place here inside of this email. And if that's ever the case where you're pulling in a table of data, where you're pulling in um, objects that you're trying to utilize and you can't actually capture them, you can't use them as dynamic content, the step that you need to implement here is the step called parse JSON. And what this data operation does, a parse JSON, allows us to use the JSON from a previous action 
and to be able to identify the individual objects that can be utilized as dynamic content. So what we need to first do is pass in, okay, what is the content that we want to parse out or split up? So we're gonna use the output from this compose. And the schema that we wanna use in order to identify what the objects are is gonna be whatever we copied out earlier. And I could copy it from here as well. So I'm gonna select generate from sample and paste in what I've copied there. So it looks just like that. Now when I select done, what you'll notice is this parse JSON action looks at the array that's passed in and starts to identify what is inside of it. So in this case, we have an object. We have multiple objects and the properties of those objects, we have a name, which is a string value. We have company, which is another string or a text value. And then we also have lucky number, which is a data type of an integer. Now it automatically detecting that. One of the key parts about working with JSON, anytime you are working with a string, like the name here, for the value itself, it must have our quotation marks there to identify that it is a string value. For something like an integer or a number, you can see that we do not need those quotations there. It identifies it just fine. But now that we have our parse JSON added in here, what you can notice is if I come back to this send an email, I can go ahead and click into my body here and now we can see some of the outputs from our parse JSON. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and send an email to myself with just a bit of a message, just kind of like, you know, putting in some of this data here. So I'm gonna go here and send an email myself in there. I will put my subject here is take a look at this JSON I wrote. And I can come in here and say, uh, hi. My name is, and I can put in my name, my dynamic content. And I work at, and I can put in my company. And then I can say, my lucky number is, and add that in. But what you'll notice is sometimes within the parse JSON, we're looking for the outputs there of the specific values and they're just not available. And that just happens to be a lot of time based upon the action you're trying to utilize that with or the part of the action, the field in which you're trying to import that or embed that into. You'll notice the lucky number is not here, but if I do click up here into the subject, well, there it is. And that just happens to be because of the way the send an email um, action is set up. So there is a way around that. I can do this. I'm gonna go ahead and put a space here real quick and just add in my lucky number into my subject. And a bit of a trick here is I can copy this out by clicking and dragging over and highlighting my dynamic content. I can go ahead and copy it there. And then because of the way that Power Automate works is it's treating dynamic content as like a general text field. So I can just go ahead and paste that there into the body of my message. And so it actually is identifying that. You can see here, that is the actual field it's looking at, the body from the parse JSON, identifying that specific uh, name value pair, the lucky number, and I can just remove it from up here. And now all I have left is, let's go send that email and take a look at what I get in return. So I'm gonna hit save, and then go ahead and do our test. Here's the test. All right, so my flow has run successfully here. It's quite small and just a little simple to, descri to describe and explain how JSON's working. But you can see here is the email that I generated. Hi, my name is Jonathan. I work at Pragmatic Works. My lucky number is nine. Well, let's take a look at the actual email itself. So I'll go ahead and pull that up. And here you are. There is the email that I generated that has all of the information that I've pulled out from the JSON array. So we're now able to capture that JSON that was written there in that compose and utilize the dynamic content that we're creating with the parse JSON data operation. Now you might be saying, well, that's, you just written JSON there, you copied and pasted. When am I ever going to do that in the real world? Well, there may be many other actions that you're using within your flow and power automate 
that is generating an output, but it's coming in as a full array rather than the ability to extract individual fields or columns from that array. Understanding that we have the ability to actually find them, once you see the output and you see there's the array, but I want that one little piece, utilizing parse JSON is the best way forward. It's the easiest way for you to go ahead and capture that individual object from the JSON array to use it as your dynamic content. Now I will say, in some cases, you'll see there's an array inside, inside of an array, right? You'll have a collection or you might have a subset within your array. So you may actually need to go in and do that parse JSON again from that output, from that one piece on the object and find the subcategories within it. And then you'll be able to find it from there. It does take a little bit of massaging and getting you down to that, that lower granular level, but you will be able to finally get there and use that as dynamic content inside of your flow. Thanks for joining me again here within our Power Automate Basics series. I think understanding how to work with and use JSON is such a strong uh, skill set to build within Power Automate because once you understand JSON and how it's used here, everything else becomes a lot easier within troubleshooting, with error handling, and just really understanding how you can get to those granular values each and every single time. Stay tuned for future episodes here within our Power Automate Basics. I'm excited to see you there.